Monday last month, I was feeling a little frisky and, well, one thing led to another and I started scrolling on Facebook Marketplace. We've all been there. You don't necessarily have the intention of buying something, but then something catches your eye. For me, it was a Mamiya C330 that appeared to be in pretty good condition. And so the very next day, I went to the seller and picked it up. All right, well, just picked up my new toy, the Mamiya C C330, and we're gonna go home and figure out if it works. Hopefully it's in working order. It looks pretty clean, but you know, you never know with these things, so let's find out. I took it home and loaded in some T-Max 100. The weather was gorgeous outside, so I thought, what the heck, let me go out, shoot 12 shots, and put this thing to the test. This video is going to act as first impressions of the Mamiya C330 because I haven't lived with it long enough to have an official opinion on it just yet. So why don't we run through the photos that I took with this camera and then we'll regroup and I'll give you all my thoughts. This good old Cadillac that I photographed a million times. It's kind of my go-to when I don't know what to shoot and I gotta finish off a roll. So let's go ahead and shoot it. So, I'll address the obvious. What the f happened with some of these? I'm actually at a bit of a loss as to what happened with some of these apparent double exposures that I got here. Like when I was at this flower at the middle of Herbert Von King Park, I distinctly remember taking one photo and then advancing the film. Part of me wanted to blame the camera's winding system, even though it was set to single and not multi, maybe it just wasn't pulling the film all the way through or pulling the film through correctly. Frankly, I don't know. But then that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because I documented that I took 12 photos. 
And if I accidentally double exposed the film, that would imply that I intentionally took 15 photos, which I didn't. Also, halfway through the roll, it stops happening. So yeah, not sure what happened here. And here we go, first impressions. First impressions are tough, especially with cameras. Sometimes you really need to ease into a system in order to feel comfortable with it. And therefore, any first impressions that you have might be skewed because you're simply not comfortable with the camera yet. And that's kind of how I feel at the moment. Full disclosure, this is my first time using a TLR. If you don't know what that means, it stands for Twin Lens Reflex. When you look into the viewfinder, what you're looking out of is the top lens. And the lens that takes the photo is the one on the bottom that has a leaf shutter inside of it. This eliminates the need for a mirror to slap up every time that you go to take a photo. It sounds like a pretty cool idea, and for all intents and purposes, it is. I think I maybe just wish it came in a neater, more ergonomic package. Let me get my initial cons out of the way, that way I can end on a more positive note. First, the viewfinder. On this particular camera, is not it. Maybe this is an issue with this specific camera, but half the time I could barely see the image. And 100% of the time I couldn't see the whole image. No matter how I position my eyes and my head, there's always this dark shadowy vignette that I feel like I'm battling. And this makes composing with this camera a real pain in the ass. This is a modular system, so I know that I can go online and find a prism viewfinder, which might mitigate some of that issue. But it's disappointing to see that one of the more basic functions of the camera, being able to see the photo that you're taking, isn't fully as realized as it could be. For instance, in my Bronica SQAI, when I removed the prism finder, I could still see the image pretty clearly in the ground glass, even if there are some unwanted reflections around. And that's without a proper waist level viewfinder like this one has. The next con I could think of is the minuscule focus throw on this camera. I feel like I could rotate the focusing knobs a tiny amount in either direction and be completely out of focus. Because of this, focusing with this camera, based on this one little test that I did, can also be another pain in the ass. I know this camera is mainly used for landscapes and still lifes and portraits and things that don't require a lot of movement because anytime that there is movement in this thing, I feel like it'd be next to impossible to get focused. One more thing that might be my camera specific is that the shutter lock is kind of loosey-goosey. This might have something to do with the double exposures that we saw earlier. It seems a little too easy for it to fall out of place and therefore unlocking the shutter, therefore increasing the likelihood that I'm gonna have an accidental misfire. Another thing I sort of mentioned earlier is the ergonomics of this camera. It's definitely not the most wieldable camera I've ever held and it definitely fares a lot better when it's on a tripod. Although on that note, I will say that having a shutter release on the side here, right where your thumb will go, is, uh, is pretty nice, so it, it gets a point for that. Let's see, I feel like this next one shouldn't really be a con because in many ways it's a feature of the camera, but it's the parallax correction in this camera. It could just be a little bit frustrating when composing shots and something that I feel like I'm just gonna have to get used to. Now, let me end all of this on a positive note. For starters, the image quality. What's funny is in this first roll, you can almost see the progression from doesn't know shit about how to use this thing to getting the hang of it to shooting an in-focus photo of a Cadillac side mirror. This last photo actually gives me a lot of hope for this camera's potential. I was looking through the first 11 and thinking, oh no, did I waste a bunch of money on this thing? And then that Cadillac photo showed up and I said to myself, okay, I get it now. And on that note, I have to mention the cost. Full disclosure, I bought this camera with its 65 millimeter lenses for $300, which is roughly what you can get it on eBay for. So not the most expensive medium format camera by a long shot. Actually, it's on the cheaper end. When I posted about getting this photo on Instagram, I had a few people reaching out in my DMs saying that this was the best value medium format system by a long shot. And I'm obviously gonna have to live with it a little bit longer before I can confirm or deny that sentiment. Because this is a first impressions video, please don't take this as a rejection of this camera, but also don't take it as an endorsement of this camera. As I mentioned earlier, it could be difficult to talk with any certainty about something that you only played with one time. I'm sure I'm gonna get the hang of it and I'm sure I'm gonna have more coherent thoughts in the coming months. And when I do, I'm gonna make sure to report back with a full review of this camera. So if you wanna make sure you see that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when any new videos come out on this channel. 
You can help support this channel by finding the join button, and for a few bucks a month, you could become a member. Also, you could support me and this channel by going to my print shop and ordering a print. There's none on there that I took with this camera just yet, but I'm willing to bet by the end of the year, there will be. And last but not least, hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM, let me know what you think about the Mimiya C330, and if you have any tips and tricks out there, I'm all ears. And with that, I'll see you all next time.